Okay, so we are solving what we call a polynomial inequality. The inequality symbol here says greater than or equal to. So what you first want to do is um, represent it as an equation because we're going to act like we're solving the equation first. Get the um, boundary points, get the, the points that go um, on the boundary lines of the intervals that represent our solution. And then we'll go back into the inequality and look and see um, which intervals represent our solution set. So this is already factored for me, which is nice, which means from this first factor, I get the solution one, from this one, I get the solution two, and from this one, I get the solution three. Now, once I have those solutions to the equation and their boundary points on, um, on um, you know, the number line, put them on a number line. Um, I, I'm just showing the number line from one, two, three. I mean, obviously it goes, you know, to negative infinity this way and to positive infinity this way, but I'm only focusing on these. And they happen to be close together, so that, that's fine. Now, um, the first thing is, am I including these points in my solution set? So I'm going to go back to the inequality symbol. I just made that mess. And it says greater than or equal to, right? Which means that I'm, I'm including everything... Um, in this as a solution that makes the left-hand side greater than the right-hand side, but also makes the left-hand side equal to the right-hand side. And these are the values that make the left-hand side equal to the right-hand side. So that means I'm going to put shaded circles on those values. So they're part of my solution set. Now to determine which intervals I'm going to shade as my solution, I'm going to go pick test points in each of these um, intervals. So like for example here, Zero is to the left of one, so it represents the interval to the left of one. Uh, zero, uh, 1.5 is um, between one and two, so it's going to represent this interval between one and two. So let's do 1.5. 2.5 is between two and three, it's representing this interval, and then let's use four. Whatever easiest, you know, whatever's the easiest um, for, for the intervals to represent those, those pieces. And then I'm, I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm going to plug this in to the original, right? To this x minus 1 times x minus 2 times x minus 3. I plug it in here. And I just really care about the situations that make it greater than or, well, greater than or equal to, greater than 0, because we already dealt with the equal to portion. So what I mean is take 0 and plug it in here. 0 minus 1. Now that's going to be a negative number, right? 0 minus 2 is also a negative number. I don't care what the number is. 0 minus 3 is also a negative number. Now, why don't I care what the number is? This says that the left-hand side should be greater than 0. That means that the left-hand side should be positive. So whatever intervals create that positive scenario, those are part of the solutions to this inequality. Now, when I plug in 0, I get a negative times a negative times a negative. Negative times negative is positive, but positive times negative is negative. So this interval here is going to give me negative outcomes. So everything less than 1 is going to give me negative outcomes. Now that's not part of my solution set because I want the ones that make it greater than 0, positive outcome. So this is not part of my shaded region. Let's try 1.5. 1.5 minus 1 is a positive outcome. 1.5 minus 2 is a negative outcome. And 1.5 minus 3 is a negative outcome. And this positive times negative times negative is going to give me a positive total outcome. That means that everything between 1 and 2 is part of my solution set because I want all the cases such that the, um, what just happened? Because this outcome is positive, that means that this is part of my solution set. So everything between 1 and 2 works will give me an outcome such that the left-hand side here is greater than 0 or positive. Plug in 2.5. When I plug in 2.5 here, I'm going to get a positive outcome. 2.5 minus 2 is also positive. But 2.5 minus 3 is negative. So this interval is going to give me a whole negative outcome. That's not part of my solution set because I want all the cases that make the left-hand side positive. Let's try 4. 4 minus 1 is positive, 4 minus 2 is positive, 4 minus 3 is positive, so this is also going to give me a positive outcome, and that means it's part of my solution set. And now I have the um, representation of my solution set on a real number line, I want to put it in interval notation. So from left to right, I go from 1 to 2, including 1, including 2, and from 3 to infinity, including... Three, in interval notation, this is the solution set to this inequality. 
These are the values that make the left-hand side greater than or equal to zero. Now, a situation like this is not factored for me, so I actually have to factor it first. So I'm going to solve the equation, factor it first, and then um, deal with the inequality. So find the points that lie on the boundary line first. So I don't know if you recall the rational roots theorem. I need to determine the possible real rational solutions, right? Um, and I'm going to take all the factors of this divided by all the factors of this. So I'll get 1 or 7. And if I, you know, if you look at it, you could see that if I plug in 1 into the function, 1 to the third plus 7 times 1 squared minus 1 minus 7, 1 plus 7 minus 1 minus 7 is 0, that means that 1 is part of my um, solution set. So synthetic division... I'm going to use to get to the other factor, 1 multiply diagonally, add vertically, multiply diagonally, add vertically, multiply. So again, my remainder is 0. My other factor is x squared plus 8x plus 7. And then that makes it easier to factor this down. So I have an x plus 7 and an x plus 1. <clears throat> so now I have the factored case of this function. Right? The first solution was 1, so x minus 1 is a factor. The other two factors are x plus 7 and x plus 1. x plus 7 and x plus 1. So we're going to set it equal to 0. So that means I get 1, negative 7, and negative 1 as part of my solution set. But I want to go back to the inequality where this thing, the left-hand side here, is less than 0. So I want all the cases that make the left-hand side just less than 0, meaning negative. Let's put those numbers on the number line. I have negative 7 here, negative 1, and then 1 from least to greatest. And these points are not included in my solution set because it says less than and not less than or equal to. So I have open circles at those values. Then I want to use test points to determine which intervals follow this solution set. So negative 8 is less than negative 7. How about negative 2 here? 0 and 2, and I'm going to plug it in here, and I want all the situations that make the left less than 0 or negative. So negative 8 minus 1 is negative, negative 8 minus or plus 7 is negative, and negative 8 plus 1 is negative. So this is going to give me a negative outcome overall, right? Positive times a negative is negative, and this is part of my solution set, right? I want everything less than 0. Plug in negative 2, I get a negative, positive, negative, so this is going to be positive overall. Plug in 0, I get a negative, a positive, and a positive. This is negative overall. That's what I want, a negative interval. Plug in 2. 2 minus 1 is positive. 2 plus 7 is positive, and 2 plus 1 is positive. So this is a positive interval, which is not part of my solution set. I want the negative intervals. And therefore, now in interval notation, I could represent my solution as from the left, negative infinity to negative 7, not including negative 7, and negative 1 to positive 1, not including negative 1 and not including 1. These are the intervals, these are the numbers in these intervals that represent the solution set to this inequality.